Happy New Year. So, this is the Synology 923, or sorry, DS923 Plus. Is it worth the investment? Hmm, I'm a bit disappointed to be honest. Let's talk about it. Okay, so I decided to upgrade from this. This is the DS718 Plus, and it's a two bay unit. And I really liked it. Uh, there are some design stuff that is kind of weird. I think this will show why. <laughs> so th that's just, um, yeah. You get the point. Anyways, I decided to upgrade from this and um, I just wanted to go through a couple of things of the Synology units with you. And that's why we're here. So if it's the first time you're looking at Synology NASes, you might want to check this video out. If you're looking into upgrading your unit to the 23 models, you definitely want to check this uh, video out. <laughs> this is the 923 DS, or sorry, the DS 923 Plus. Um, I just want to let you know this video is not sponsored at all. This is my own money that I spent on this. This is a 4 bay NAS. My old one was a 2 bay NAS. I don't need four slots right now, but I need three. Just to touch upon the basic stuff first. When you buy a Synology unit, everything is kind of ni nice and tidy, and it's a box. Just a box. And it seems like just a box that can hold hard drives, and it is. Um, there's a bit, bit of a difference between the J units and the Plus units, because the J units are definitely more focused on the home use, and for most people that's perfectly fine. Um, the plus units are for office and um, small businesses, also home use, advanced users, enthusiasts, whatever. And um, they have a bit more power and they have a bit more software that you can install. So this is a plus unit. So let's just take a look around here. So four bays, okay? And turn it to the Synology logo. And then we have two fans in the back and we have two uh, RJ45 uh, for networking. We have an um, expansion slot if we have 10 gig uh, network. Um, we have a, I think it's a, a eSATA. Yeah, an eSATA. And then we have the, uh, we also have a USB here. Anyways, then there's this very weird, Synology have always had this. I've, I've worked with Synology boxes from like 2012 or something like that and they have already always had this uh, proprietary um, uh, power inlet cable and it's a 12 volt and I think it's just for space uh, so that they save space on the on the unit you can see here that this is the cable uh, for power and it takes a normal computer uh, computer cable computer power cable right okay uh, I think this is a bit annoying because this doesn't lock in quite as well as a normal computer cable would. The new thing about the 923 uh, unit is that it can hold M2 uh, or NVMe drives. So this is my main reason for upgrading. I wanted to use NVMe drives as uh, storage pools. And a storage pool in the Synology terminology is, Synology terminology, that's good. Storage pools is what you can use for shared folders and shared folders are what you can see on the network and, and that's basically what you can use as storage from all your other devices. So in the 923 model uh, we have the four bays for 3.5 inch drives and underneath here we have two small clippy things. One here for one SSD or NVMe drive and the other here for the other one. So as you can see I have two NVMe drives and when this came out I was very excited um, that it was now possible to use these these drives for um, or the M2 slots for storage pools because uh, Synology has had M2 drives for I think two generations now 
and they have only been available to be used as SSD cache and so I thought when this came out and we could use it as storage pools I was really bought in on the idea this is my disappointment we can't use storage pools f from the M2 slots when I got this unit I popped in these two drives that you saw just before and uh, I expected to start up the NAS install DSM the, the Synology software and just get up and running with these two drives just until I got the time to migrate from the old NAS. That's a whole different chapter migrating from one NAS to another. It's a mess. I will probably make a video about that if you want me to. Let me know in the comments below. Okay? I got then, I installed the drives, I plugged the power in and started the NAS up. Nothing was there. I couldn't install anything. And it seems like Synology has made the worst kind of decision that I could imagine here. I needed to plug in a 3.5 inch drive that I had laying around. It was a small drive, but then I could install the uh, Synology software. And when I tried to create the storage pools from the NVMe drives, I was met with the horrifying. <laughs> I was met with a very unexpected message saying that the drives were not supported for storage storage pools. And that's super annoying because then you get a link for the compatible devices, which is only Synology's own manufactured devices. Synology has for a long time given you a warning if you bought a Western Digital SATA or a Western Digital uh, NAS drive or a Seagate NAS drive or whatever, enterprise disks or whatever, and put them into your NAS, Synology would give you a warning saying that this is not on their compatibility list so they might not support if uh, something goes wrong and I'm fine with that it's kind of my choice I want to decide which kind of disk I want to run so that's fine as long as I can use it as a storage pool but with the M2 uh, slots they have decided to go a completely different direction and saying that you cannot create a storage pool if you are not using Synology branded NVMe drives. Why Why should we use only Synology branded NVMe drives? They're kind of double the price, last I checked, of any other NVMe drive. So it seems like this plot of trying to just sell their own drives and I don't really like that. It seems like a software block of some sort. It might not be I haven't got any information back from Synology. I wrote an email to them trying to get some answers, but I haven't heard anything yet. If I do, I will update this video, of course. But that's kind of super disappointing to me. What I can do, and the reason why I'm actually keeping the unit, is that uh, Synology might open for it. There's huge complaints about this all over the internet. <laughs> But uh, so, so Synology might make a software update sometime in the future saying that you can use any NVMe drive on the same terms if, as if you were using an a unsupported drive so that you can actually use the NVMe drives going forward just by installing a software update. Also, you can still use the NVMe drives as SSD cache. So the huge drives that I have or the ones that I'm frequently reading and, and writing to are going to be cached by the NVMe drives. So that's kind of um, the way that I'm going to handle it, I guess. But I'm very disappointed in Synology uh, for making this decision. And I would like to see that changed, uh, to be honest. Um, if you read any of the reviews, I've read only one review that said uh, that that specifically said that only Synology drives can be used as NVMe cache. So I don't think it's an information that is very widely uh, out there. And this is why I'm making this video basically. So I hope you liked this video. If there's anything you need me to explore on the 923 plus, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions regarding the Synology boxes, also let me know in the comments below. That's it for this video guys. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, press the like button. If you didn't like it, press the dislike button so I know that I don't have to make any more of these videos. And please click that subscribe button also if you want me to make more videos. It kind of just give me the 
feeling of acceptance in this world. So please, it's free. Everything is free. The like is free. The dislike is free. Everything is free. And if you convert that into your local currency, it's still free. So why not? Okay? Okay. Bye-bye.